The next type of fields we're going to look at are called background elements. We discussed this in day two when we looked at the UI. Background elements um, are a section on the Kanja profile where multiple entries can be captured. So uh, if we take a look at the UI and we scroll down, we can see here previous employment. This is an example of a background element. So here we can use the add button and inside here, we should start to see lots of different data fields within the background element. And what's unique about background elements is you can have multiple entries. So for example, this could be your previous employment saying that you worked as a developer and you worked for uh, your employer was SAP Galway and your employer country was in Ireland and your type of business was IT. But let's say you worked here for, for the last three years. So the 1st of January, uh, 2018. Up until the 1st of January, 2021. And before this, maybe you had a different job. So let's just say you worked uh, as, you worked in SAP Galway, and your title this time was a business analyst and before this this was in 2015 so let's say it was the first of january until the first of january 2018. so the reason we're doing this is that we're we have back different multiple entries so you can add all your previous employments similarly down here you've got a formal education where you can add lots of different sections for your education history the same can also be applied here under language skills and certifications and licenses. So just for example, look at language skills. You can say that can you speak Chinese. We see some different data fields. Can you speak this language? What is your speaking proficiency, uh, your reading and your writing proficiency? But if you speak more than one language, you can quite simply add and you can also remove different elements. So this is the reason that background elements are unique. There is a one-to-many relationship here. And we'll just go back to the slides. So these must be configured identically because the same fields often exist in the succession data model. And this is for a synchronization to take place between the candidate profile and the employee profile. Within the background element, you must configure the label and the data field elements and if applicable, pick lists. So yeah, so we'll take a look at the, the data field definitions next. So every background element must contain at least, at least one data field element. Each data field element appears as a field to the end user and all the fields within a background element is displayed as a record within the background element. So let's take a look at that. So this entire section, so let's close off some of these for a moment. The entire section here, which is called previous employment, that is a background element. It's a little bit like a folder. And inside of the background element called previous employment, we have lots of different fields, but we're referring to these as data fields. So all of these fields here are data fields and they're within the background element. If we take a look at formal education, again, this is a second background element. And inside here, we have more data fields. So you can only configure a limited number of data fields elements for each type. So when we look at the definitions, we're going to notice that they're called slightly different. We're seeing a different structure to the definition of the data fields. So here we have a field in the screenshot called ID is present employer. And now we're seeing something called field name and we're seeing V field one. Well, what the sentence above this means, you can only configure a limited number of data fields. It means that in the system, we're limited to having 20 different field, uh, sorry, 20 different V fields. So we're going to have V field one right up until V field 20. And um, these attributes are, are explained more clearly in the next slide. So the data field elements must contain the following attributes, ID, field name required, and max length. ID, this attribute allows any alpha numeric character uh, without spaces or special characters, but this value must be unique within the background element. So 
we have the ID and you can call it whatever you like. So in the example that we've just seen above, this ID is called present employer. But it must be unique within that background element. So for example, you may have another background element and you can reuse the ID, but the ID must be unique within the single background element. Field name, this attribute defines the type of data that the user is allowed to enter into the field. So there's no type attribute. So this is where we're seeing a difference here between a background element data field and a regular field definition. We're seeing field name. This is where we store the type of data. We're not seeing type is equal to text or type is equal to number. Instead, we're seeing field name. Um, required, this again is whether or not the field is mandatory. So we're gonna see required equals true or require equals false. And lastly, we have max length. The max length cannot be greater than 4,000 or less in one. So again, this is a character limit on the field. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the same screenshot again, where we have a field called present employer and the field name is V field one. And now let's take a look at the different field names. So when it comes to data fields, we have different field names or in brackets here, we see they're also being referred to as data types. So first of all, we have an I field. This field contains integer values, so no decimals. And it's possible to have up to eight different I fields in the Canva profile template. So for example, this is I field one, I field two, all the way up to I field eight. Next, we have F fields, and this is decimal or Boolean values. And again, it's possible to have up to eight values F field one, right up to F field eight. We have D fields. Uh, these contain date values. Uh, it's possible to have up to three values, D field one up to D field three. And then we have V fields. So this is alphanumeric text values. So we're having numbers and letters here. These are probably the most common and it's possible to have up to 20 values. So from V field one up to V field 20. So again, checking that example that we have on the previous slide the id is present employer and the field name is v field one so this is where we're specifying the type of data we need to enter and if we look at v field one it means this contains alpha numeric text um, start date and end date so these fields contain date val values that are validated against each other so this is quite interesting um, so for example um, these will work together. So it means that you cannot have an end date which precedes your start date. So the start date and end date field name, they can only be used once per background element. Uh, and then we also see a note here at the bottom of the slide, which means that the I fields, F fields, D fields, and V fields must have an integer added to the end of the attribute. So this means that it must be called V field one, F field two, etc. These integers need not to be in order, but they do not need to be consecutive, but they must be unique within the background element. So we're gonna quickly take a look at the XML definitions of a background element. And we can use that same example of a previous work experience. So in my notepad of the Canva profile template, I'm just doing a quick control search using control F on my keyboard for background element. So here we see a background element. Now again, using Notepad, we can see this red line showing us the beginning of the background element all the way down to where the background element is closed off and we see the closing bracket. So everything here within this red line is contained within the background element, which is called outside work experience. Again, we see a label called previous employment we see translation labels available also. So within this background element, we start to see what we've been referring to here as data fields. So we've got a field with the ID present employer. We're seeing the field name is V field one. The character limit, the max length is 999 and it's anonymized equals false, meaning that it's not sensitive, sensitive data. We also have data fields such as start date, and end date, again, we're seeing the field name here, it's start date, showing the type of data we want to enter, it's gonna be the start date. And if we keep scrolling, we'll see some other examples. 
another field, a data field called employer. Field name is B field two. Again, so this is your alphanumeric text into this type of field. B field three, B field four, B field five, B field nine. So again, we're seeing here that these numbers, they don't have to be consecutive. If we scroll down, we may see some other examples. Uh, they're all 